all of us refer to our city as a town, a railroad town. Oh, there are many different businesses, of course. But we fellows who live here and work for the road, we kind of think of it as our town. town, a busy town. Now in these modern times with so much activity, keeping wheels turning and goods moving, there are hazards in all industries and enterprises. But in our town, on all our jobs, we've done a big thing in the last year. Oh, we're not bragging or taking anything for granted, but we've learned to work and to live more safely. You see, we've learned to pay attention to the voice of the book. What is this voice of the book? Anything supernatural about it? Oh, no, but there's magic in it, the magic of common sense. And to show you how it came about, let's go back a year, back to a day in June and a scene of youth. June, a year ago, and a boy named Charlie Todd, who works for the railroad, a girl named Sally Kendrick, and Sally's mother, Mabel Kendrick. June a year ago and a scene of duty. Meet Charlie's uncle, George Todd. He's come a long way up the railroad ladder. A stern boss, but a fair one. Uh oh. Hmm? What's that sign say, Tommy? Be where you are with all your mind. What's it mean to you? Well, it means that wherever I am and whatever I do, I should concentrate, you know, use my head. Call that using your head? What's that one say? The law of accidents is the law of cause and effect. Standing on the swivel chair would have been the cause, and a bad fall would be the effect. Mm. Believe I'll donate them to my successor. Well, Dick, how do you feel? Ready for work, but I'm holding here in the carpet. Why is that, Mr. Todd? Sit down, Dick. You're through at the hospital. And you're here for my final treatment. When I visited you, I tried out a theory of mine on you and the other men in the accident ward. Remember? I put this question. Can you fellows honestly say that you were surprised when you had your accidents? Didn't a little inside voice warn you? And didn't you refuse to listen? And so you had your falls or whatever it was? All except you said yes. Dick, you were the only railroad man in that hospital. You, an old timer, taking a fall like that. Look out there. I bet his inner voice is warning him, get a good grip before you start. Didn't you hear a voice speaking up before you took your fall? At that time, I was thinking of something else. A row with my wife. You had no right to be thinking of anything else. Fellow follows that rule, his inner voice will have a chance to be heard. Well, glad to have you back. And you've had your last lecture from me. So, you're through on the road? Retiring. The saddest day in the life of any railroader. Won't seem natural without a Todd around here. Well, there have been Todds on the road for a good many years. And there'll be one to keep up the tradition. My nephew, Charlie Todd. Yeah. Heard he qualified as a fireman. If he ever fires for me, I'll look out for that boy. Thanks, Dick. That boy means a lot to me.
Yes, and Charlie Todd means a lot to Miss Sally Kendrick, too. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah. Me too. I have another surprise for you. I have a wonderful new job. Mother! We're engaged. And Charlie's quit the railroad. Oh! Oh, that's splendid. Quit the railroad? I should say not. I'm a fireman now. Uh, a fireman? Yeah. Right in line for an engineer's job. In a few years. Oh, that's absurd, Charles. For Sally's sake, and your own good, we must get you out of that messy old railroad. What? And into something more suitable. But, but... There's the whistle. Bye, Mrs. Kendrick. Bye, Sally. See you later. Oh. So, now he's a fireman. And you could have had your pick of the finest young men in this town. But I love Charlie. He loves me, and well, the railroad's his career. Then, my dear? We'll just have to change careers for him. Charlie! I want to see you! Uncle George, I've got news for you. Sally and I... And I've got news for you. I've got to lay you off till the lesson sinks in. Say, what is all this? If you want to run the 100-yard dash, go on out to the athletic field. So I ran across the tracks. So what? So you could have been maimed or killed. You know the rules. But your mind is on Sally. You forgot everything you ever learned about safety. Now, just a minute, Uncle Don't George. Get excited, boy. The road holds me responsible for your conduct and compliance with our rules. Yeah, and you're always laying down the law to grown men, as though we were children. Now, just a minute, Charlie. Don't say things you'll regret. Well, I've had enough of it. I'm through. So, you're a quitter, eh? No, I'm no quitter, but I'm sick and tired of these lectures. I'm through with this darned road for good and all. Goodbye. Charlie. The mayor and somebody from the school board. Oh, Tommy, will you bring that chair up there? Sure. Now you can show them in. Okay. Won't you come in, please? Oh, Mrs. Wallace, oh, Mr. this is an honor. Won't you be seated? Thank you. And Sam, oh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean Mr. Mayor. <laughs> the mayor is here to get a few pointers from the railroad so he can make our city a lot safer. If your railroad was half as safe as the rest of our fair city... <laughs> now, listen, Sam. I just visited a friend in the hospital. Know something? He was the only railroad man there. Just one railroad accident case in the whole ward. The rest were hurt around home or in some fool automobile accident. What's that prove? It proves that industry, the railroads, and all our big plants, we have safety training, and it works. As for the rest of the city, no safety program at all. <laughs> have to excuse our friend George. He's a nut on safety, never lets up. <laughs> But now, let's give him our message. We want you to speak at the high school graduation exercises next week. Me? Oh, I'm no public speaker. <laughs> You've got to. Oh, no. Can't let you off, George. You graduated here just 50 years ago. 50 years ago? 
Was my class that far back? That's right. And since it's an anniversary occasion, we have a special program Wednesday. You know, apart from the regular exercises. <laughs> Sorry. You'll have to get some other member of my class to make the speech. No, see here, George. The general manager's car is in the station. He's on his way to your office. Well, but you'll want to stay and... No, no, you're busy and uh, I'll be seeing you. Don't disappoint us, Mr. Todd. He won't. <laughs> I don't know. George, nice to see you. Certainly good to see you. <laughs> My friends just gave me a shock. Said I have to make a speech at the graduation exercises. Oh, that I have to hear. When is the great occasion? Next week, Wednesday, but... Oh, uh, I'll be heading back this way that day. <laughs> uh, chair, Mr. McDaniels? No, I have to go, George. I, I just dropped in to wish you good luck. Good fishing and all that. I hate to leave the road. I know how it is, George. If there's anything I can do for the road, well, I've given a lot of thought to safety work. I know you have, George. You've done a good job. A real credit to the road. Well, I'll see you next week. I certainly want to hear your big speech. <laughs> There'll be no speech from me. <laughs> the last of the Todds. Why did I have to get him sore? Maybe I am always lecturing, laying down the law. Now they want me to speak to the young folks. Not me. My speeches have made trouble enough. Well, Mr. Todd, if you're tired of me already... Oh, no, Sally. I, I lost my job. I'm all through on the railroad. Talked myself right out of a swell job. Maybe if I went back and explained to them that... Mother, this time Charlie's really through on the road. Oh, how nice. I knew Charles would consider our feelings. And now, your Uncle Fred will have something for Charles at the store. And I'm going to telephone him, right now. But, but I don't want anything at the store. I don't want to... No. Retirement. A life of leisure. But there's no Todd on the railroad to carry on. A smart new job for a well-groomed young man. Can I help you, sir? Yes, sir. I'd like to look some ties, please. Which one would you like, sir? You see that? Six is on time. 
you like to go back on the road, Charlie? Would I? Yes, sir. I think I would. Can you get me the phone? Sure. Hello, Mac. Yeah. My nephew, Charlie, would like to go back on the road. All right. Thanks, Mac. Report to Mac in the morning. Thanks, Uncle George. Are you leaving us? Oh, yes, sir. Good, good. Look, dear. It's Mabel Kendricks and Charlie and Sally. I want to talk to George. Evening, Mabel. George Todd, I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh, hello, kids. Come on in. Sit down. Make yourselves comfortable. Oh, now, why must you interfere with Sally and Charles? Spoil their happiness. You talk to them, Uncle George. Sally and I have been battling ever since I told her I could have my fireman's job back. You did it, George Todd. You egged him on. You and your precious old railroad. Naturally, Sally and I are opposed. I just don't think railroad work is safe. Well, now you've all had your say, maybe I can... Charlie, you'll just have to choose between me and the railroad. Oh, Sally. Never make a man choose between you and his career. Right. Then, too, I'm ambitious for Charlie. Yes, and she just doesn't think the work is good enough for him. Oh, the fireman. Oh, nothing to stop him from going right to the top of the ladder. And if he's careful, he... Of course, of course he'll be careful. Oh, Sam, how nice. Hello, Grace. George in? Yes, indeedy. Oh, uh, am I uh, intruding? Why, it's Mayor Porter. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Mayor? How do you do? <laughs> Getting out the vote, Sam? No, no, school board business. Will you uh, excuse us? I've definitely made up my mind, George, that you've got to make that speech. Get some other member of my class. No one left but you. It's not right. Of all those fine kids 50 years ago, so few who live their lives out. And so many taken before their time by accidents. Come on, George, we're depending on you. Why not speak on railroad work as a career? My subject will be the voice of the book. Another day in our town, a special day in June. A great day and a nervous orator. Mabel didn't want to come, but I made her. Uh, what about Sally and Charlie? <laughs> New shoes hurt? Right one pinches a little. Left one never bothers me. Oh. <laughs> now, don't you be worried, George. You'll be wonderful. It may not be as wonderful as you think. As soon as I seem to be boring the folks, use your handkerchief. <laughs> I'll be darned. There's McDaniels. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> I'll go out and take care of him. <laughs> And 
now our city's own Mr. Railroad, a man we hold in pride and esteem, a man who was graduated from this school just 50 years ago, Mr. George Todd. Ladies and gentlemen of the graduating class, I know what this occasion means to you. Fifty years ago, I never thought I'd make it. But long-suffering teachers stuck by me and got me through with a diploma in my hand. <laughs> Today, you young people are at the front end of a life that can be wonderful and as safe as you'll let it be. Of course, I've been in the transportation business most of my life. So don't hold it against me for thinking the railroads have had a lot to do with the comfort and safety of our modern travel. Now, I have no prepared speech, but for a few moments, I'd like to talk to you about the voice of the book. I'm going to remind you of the little inner voices that speak to every one of us. What do I mean by such voices? Right now, an inner voice is speaking to everyone in this room. Right now, a little voice is asking each one of you, is that dull old man going to bore us for hours? <laughs> Now, here's a shabby old scrapbook. I've been pasting it up for years. I want everyone to start a book of your own. Not a book like this, because frankly, all this printed matter is worthless until it's in the head. What I mean is a mental scrapbook, which includes everything in a company book of safety rules everything you've been told about safety, every sign, motto, and slogan of safety, every label on a can, container, or piece of equipment pertaining to safety and safe handling. That's what this book is made up of. You couldn't tote any such load as this on your rounds, but the information won't take up much room in your head. And it'll be a grim reminder that life is relentless in enforcing the law of accidents, the law of cause and effect. That law applies from the cradle to the grave. It's a law that shows us in early youth that a loose shoelace is a cause and a bad fall the effect. Now then, no matter what job you go into, office, store, railroad, or factory, you'll find safety rules, basic common sense rules that you can apply not merely on the job, but in the home and on our streets and highways. Absorb the rules. Get them in your mental book. Then they'll help you to develop a constant alertness to the possibilities of harm to yourself at work and in your leisure hours. Start your book so it'll have a voice in your life. A voice that'll speak up just when you need it most. Whether you're on the job, driving a car, hanging a picture, or doing anything else that calls for concentration, well, then a daydream can put a person in the hospital or the morgue. So here's something for everybody's book. No matter what you're doing, be where you are with all your mind. In this fine graduating class, there are, I hope, many young men who will take up railroading as a career. And there are many young ladies who will marry young railroad men. I want to speak particularly to you and to all who have relatives working for the railroad. And when you go home and spread the word I'm giving you here, 
Somebody's sure to say, well, darn that old George Todd. And that's all right. Because maybe they'll listen to you. Where with me, they often get sore. Now, railroads don't exist in a vacuum. And railroad men have a home life. And I'd like to bring a better understanding into all your homes. So I'll tell you some of the situations we try to prepare our men for. What a railroad man's inner voice should tell him as it speaks to him from his book. Now picture this as I go along. The book and the voice tell a man, stop, look both ways before you cross the tracks and watch your step. That rule is just as good off the job. On foot, careful people listen to the voice and obey it when crossing a street. Stop, look both ways before you cross. Take a man who's careful on the job. He shouldn't let himself be careless or too smart and important to listen to his inner warning voice when he's off duty. In a car, off the job, and on your own, your safety and that of others is strictly up to you. And the familiar highway signs of life have a voice that every good driver can hear and should obey. Every sign has a lot of thought and meaning behind it. Every sign is put there for your protection. And when one of those signs reads, stop, it really speaks with a voice every driver should hear. Careful drivers, smart drivers, always heed all the signs of life. Again, take a railroad man who works on and around cars. His voice tells him, getting on and off. Make sure of your grip. Make sure of your footing. Same rule applies to you. Getting in or out of bathtubs or automobiles. Have a good grip and make sure you're going to step where you should. Take the rules for the use of equipment. Every rule makes sense. And rule and voice tell a man Make sure before you go ahead. By the way, you don't need big, expensive equipment to have an accident. Oh, no. You can have an accident right around home with very simple equipment. Take the case of placing an ordinary stepladder. The voice tells you to get the legs firmly set and the hinged brace fully extended. Well. With safety measures, you can't leave out a single step or all may fail. So right there, you have a cause and the effect can be painful. At home or at work, accidents are not funny. They cost time, they cost money. And the sad part is they can hurt others and sometimes ruin a whole family. I first started to think about safety many years ago, long before we had safety programs. There was a certain young railroad man, and the one rule he went by was, go ahead, take a chance. If you don't, you're a sissy. So one day, this fellow came running through the freight yards. He didn't bother to look both ways, and in full stride, he stepped on a rail and fell. Well, he wasn't killed, but he was hurt badly. I'm positive about these facts because I was that young man. Point I want to make is this. In those days, we fellows didn't know any better. We had no safety rules and no encouragement to listen to inner warning voices. Accidents were commonplace. 
and seemed inevitable. Then, gradually over the years, a lot of men devoted a lot of thought to the subject of safety. Railroads and other industries spent and continue to spend millions of dollars to drive home their messages so that all of us, no matter where we work or what we do, may be safer on the job and off the job. That's a great advantage you have today over the youth of my day. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen of the graduating class, because a successful and a safe career in your chosen field is possible for each and every one of you. Speaking of careers, there's a man in this room who started as a call boy. Now he's general manager of the railroad. Why, when it comes to railroading as a career, I could go on for hours. Guess I've talked too long. Now, when you go out, I hope you'll remember about the voice of the book. Joke about it, if you like, because that'll show you not only remember, but take it to heart. Start your own safety book today, each and every one of you. Listen to its voice and obey that voice. And I hope that you'll all be back here 50 years from today to celebrate the anniversary of this occasion. Thank you for listening, and God bless you all. Fine speech, George. Oh, thanks, Sam. Uh, <laughs> oh, <dear>. you what? <laughs> Stopped as soon as I could after you used your handkerchief. What? Why, I was so proud, I was crying. No. Congratulations, George. The finest safety talk I ever heard. Thanks, Chief. Look here, Mr. Mayor. Many communities have reduced their accident ratio by being organized for safety. Not many cities have a George Todd available and ready. Suppose it did any good for Charlie and Sally, or did I only make it worse for them? Oh, good George. <laughs> Going back to work. You bet I am. Mr. McDaniels, won't you come over to our house for refreshments? I'm asking the Todds and our mayor, of course. That was a year ago. In our town, there's been a lot of talk about the voice of the book. Why, we even joke about it. But you'd be surprised how many of us have started our own books and pay heed to our inner voice of 